Oh, bless the Lord, oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within we we bless his holy name this morning. My name is Pastor Mwali from the Key of David International, and we want to say to you, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has arisen upon you. We thank the Lord for the ability to come together to pray. We're going to be praying together. This is day two of our time of this 21-day prayer and fast, and we thank the Lord for the opportunity. Um, last week, well, I say in last week, yesterday, we started our time of prayer and fasting. And um, the first topic we looked at in this time of prayer and fasting, um, and I hope many of you are joining us in this journey together, and I pray that you are being infilled and encouraged um, by the presence of the Lord. The first area that we we did together, um, we talked about vision, the importance of vision vision type in the chat vision somebody vision the importance of vision god bless you Cohen. so good to see you here with us hallelujah um sister deborah god bless you so good to see you in the house with us as we go into this time of prayer pastor Chantel, blessings to you um glory and honor to the name of the lord brother jody blessings to you my friend to you and your family so good to have you with us as we go into this time of prayer so we talked about in the first session we talked about vision and we prayed we prayed intentionally we prayed that the lord will renew our vision he will restore it we will see the vision we will write the vision and we will feel the vision write that again First place that in your heart. Those are the prayer points. You can look at the um, the recap on our Facebook or YouTube page. We talked about those four key areas and we prayed that we would have a restoration of our vision. That we will be able to see the vision. That we will be able to write the vision. And fourthly, we will be able to feel the vision in a true, true and real way way hallelujah hallelujah i pray that somebody's been encouraged right now just by that recap and today we want to talk about um, a very very important um, point a very important place and that's called reimagine encouragement reimagine encouragement today we want you to reimagine what encouragement looks like. We want to invite you to reimagine what encouragement looks like. Blessings to you, Rilan. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Reimagine encouragement. We're going to be reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, and it reads If there, so if there is any encouragement, in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, hallelujah, being in full accord and of one mind. The Lord is calling us to reimagine encouragement. And this encouragement is encouragement in Christ. It is not the type of external encouragement that only lasts a season. It's the type of courage and encouragement that perseveres. It's the type of encouragement that rises to the occasion. A definition of encouragement says, encouragement is defined by a, in spirit, a heartened sense, a emboldened means to fill with courage or strength of purpose. Encouragement, I would read that last part, to a sense of courage or strength of purpose. In a simpler way, encouragement, I define it as timely acts of kindness that strengthens you to move forward. Somebody type in the chat, timely, because that's key. 
encouragement comes with such precision. It's timely. It's timely. Come on, somebody. It's timely. Encouragement comes from a spirit of timeliness. Sometimes we think of encouragement as saying kind words. Sometimes we think encouragement is just saying gentle things. But I've learned as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, as a business leader, that encouragement becomes truly meaningful when it is deposited at the right time. You see, sometimes people ask me, you know, Pastor, how do you manage your day? And how in managing your day, you still seem to be present in all different areas of your life. And I remember answering that question, a young man was asking me, and I said to him, it's because God has taught me the importance of timeliness, being where you need to be at the right time. So to someone here, you may lead a busy life. Or should I rephrase that? A productive life. How do you stay present in the, all the affairs of your life? It is the principle of timeliness at the right time. Because I'll say this to you. Sometimes in the times of tragedy, people don't remember peace time. They remember the war time. When things were really tough. And the question that proceeds after this time or during this time of great difficulty, where were you? In the times of great difficulty, few people, they seldom draw from the time of peacetime, your presence, your gifts, your love, your encouragement, your kindness. But it's in a time of difficulty, they remember. Am I talking to somebody here? They remember who was there. How do you, in this time of prayer and fasting, number one, receive encouragement in Christ, and number two, be an encourager in Christ? How do you receive that spirit of timeliness to attend acts of kindness that strengthens others or you receive strength to move forward. Let's look at the importance of encouragement. Let's look at the vital nature of encouragement. Let's look at the essential nature of encouragement. Because the scripture tells us that encouragement brings intimacy. Let's, let's understand that number one. Encouragement brings intimacy. How do we know this? Let's look at the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 7. This is, brings the account of Mary Magdalene. She broke the alabaster box and she laid it and poured it, the scripture says, all from the top of Jesus' head, and she anointed him. The Bible tells us that many people were opposed. The disciples, they say, she was wasting it, in particular Judas. But this woman who was encouraging Christ and preparing him for the crossroad unto the cross, the Bible tells us her encouragement brought her first in line to see the resurrected Christ. Her encouragement brought her to the front of the line to see the resurrected Christ. The scripture tells us her encouragement brought her to such intimacy that the scripture says to us, she was there to see this Christ, to see the Messiah who was made manifest from the grave 
The Bible tells us in uh, John chapter 20, 20 verse 18, Mary Magdalene was the one who went to the disciples and hear it with the news of Jesus' resurrection because she spoke with him at the tomb and she said, I have seen the Lord. She told them, she told them that he had said these things to her. She was the one who was able to say, I have seen the Lord. Look at the connection. She received such a vision. Her vision was restored because she was, re she was visiting the tomb. And the angel said to her, he's no longer there. And then she spoke to Christ face to face. I want to say to you, encouragement brings intimacy. She prepared the body of Christ. She laid everything down at the right time. Remember we said, encouragement is acts of kindness in a timely manner. According to Jewish customs, the body will be prepared with, with fragrant ointments. For burial. But there was no time for this for Christ. Because he was under capital punishment called crucifixion. And these customs was not afforded to him. But I thank God he fulfilled this great honor by being prepared. By the encouraging hands of Mary Magdalene. I want to say to you, encouragement brings intimacy come on somebody type that in the chat encouragement brings intimacy number two encouragement brings unscheduled increase when you decide to be an encourager when you are filled with the encouragement of christ it brings unscheduled increase in your life we observe in philippians chapter 4 verse 18 Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi and he said, At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with your gifts that you sent you sent me with Erephidus. They are sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Paul is saying while he is in prison, he's receiving these gifts of encouragement. And he said, it's being unprovoked. I didn't request of it. It's coming unsolicited. I didn't ask of it. But he said, because you chose to encourage me, here's this promise he released to them. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. I pray today that you will be a recipient of unscheduled increase. Encouragement. As Paul describes the encouragement that was received from the church, unrequested unsolicited in return he says my god shall supply all your needs i want to say to you it's easy to quote that scripture but there's a context to that text i want to say it again i said there is a context to that text to that promise it is a promise accessible to those who express and walk in the spirit of encouragement and generosity and they gave that encouragement in such a timely fashion hallelujah number three encouragement and finally brings strength for victory I remember David was on his journey and in his journey he gathered men of great strength and valor 
and their family. Though not crowned with the crown on his head, he was yet still anointed as king. The Bible tells us in his journey of becoming, in his journey of realization, in his journey of discovery, like many of us, you may be on that journey. It's not all put together. God calls you a king, but you still are yet to receive your crown. There is a king on the inside of you, but yet right now you're on the run. And this was the condition that David was in. Anointed, but he was hunted. Anointed, but he was displaced. And in his journey of discovery, he found men. He found friendships and victories. But there was a moment in David's life, his progress was interrupted. The Bible tells us he was attacked by the Amalekites. And in that attack, while his, him and his great men were away, their wives, their produce, they increased. Their village was burnt and everything was lost. Have you been in that place before? Or are you in that place right now? You are experiencing some momentum and now that momentum has been interrupted. And the scripture tells us that in that moment, the same men that he led, they began to turn out, they looked at their situation and they began to turn their anger towards David and they began to contend with David some will say they began to blame him look what has happened have you been in that place before as a leader you're leading the team and everyone is with you as victory and momentum is happening and then when there is breakdown there is infighting there is inflection it happens in relationships. It happens in marriages. It happens in your community. From the time you're not able to bring victory. From the time you're not able to give. From the time you're not able to produce. From the time you're not able to acquiesce to their requests. There is an internal wrangling. But the Bible tells us. What rescued David? In that time of great adversity. What rescued David. To continue. In the time of great loss. The scripture says. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6. But David encouraged. Himself. In the Lord. His. God. David encouraged. Himself. In the Lord. His God. And as David began encouraging himself in the Lord. The Bible tells us. In his time of prayer. In his time of stillness. As we are in right now during this time of prayer and fasting. The scripture tells us. As he made this request. He asks the Lord. That's an interesting question. He asks the Lord, should I chase after these bands of readers? And will I catch them? Will I recover from this pitfall? Will I recover from this unscheduled pothole in my life? And the Lord answered and said to him, yes. Go after them. You will surely. Somebody type in the chat, surely. You will surely. Come on, somebody. When you encourage yourself, you are strengthening yourself for victory. You will surely. Come on, somebody. It's a promise of assurance. You will surely. Recover everything. Oh, hallelujah. 
I pray this promise comes alive to you today, in this moment, as the spirit of encouragement in Christ is released to you. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. You will surely, come on Jody, you will surely, I believe with all my heart, you will surely recover everything in the name of Jesus. You will surely recover, Crystal, everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You. Oh, come on, somebody. You. Hallelujah. You will recover everything that was taken from you. You will surely that's right, Cohen. You will. Everything that was taken. Everything that has broken down. Everything that has been burned to ashes. Everything that seems unrecoverable and unredeemable. Hallelujah. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will recover. Everything that was taken from you. The Lord is saying to you, yes, go after them. Yes, go after them because you will surely recover in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now that somebody is receiving this promise. I pray right now that this encouragement is giving them strength for victory as David encouraged himself in the Lord I declare someone is rising out of their ashes and the sound of condemnation and the voices of criticism is moving to the shadows of their lives and in this time of prayer and fasting, they are able to hear the voice of the Lord say to them, you will surely recover all. Lord, we're asking for supernatural recovery. Lord, we are asking for supernatural recovery. Lord, we're asking that someone is being increased and encouraged and strengthened for victory in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us for the victory ahead. Strengthen us for the victory ahead in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody begin to ask the Lord for strength. Strengthen us for victory. In the name of Jesus, strengthen us for the victory. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you, O oh God, bring on schedule increase in our lives. That we will have the courage to impart timely hope, timely grace. Timely assistance. Timely acts of kindness. That will release. Unscheduled increase. That will release. Unscheduled increase. I prophesy. In the name of Jesus. That you will experience. Unscheduled increase. As you flow in the spirit of encouragement. That you move from the place of victimhood. To the place of victory. Hallelujah. That you, oh God, will rise up in your people. 
the spirit of encouragement. As Paul received timely encouragement, I prophesy to you, your God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And finally, I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of encouragement brings your people to a place of intimacy where they will be able to see the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. The resurrected Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody declare that right now, intimacy. Like that woman who broke the alabaster box and she poured the oil from his head and poured it all on his feet. I declare from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, let your life be resurrected. As you lift your head up, you will see the resurrected Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Encourage your people. Encourage your people. Encourage your people. In the name of Jesus. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you know you have received, just type in the chat. I have received. Day two, reimagine encouragement. I pray that the Lord begins to do such a work. Hallelujah. For his word says, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And he's bringing us to that place of supernatural encouragement. Just type in the chat, I have received. Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you, Jody. Hallelujah. I have received. Hallelujah. God bless you, Deborah. God bless you. Cancer in the house. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord of my soul. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Day two, reimagine encouragement. We look forward to tomorrow, God's willing, as we go into this time of prayer and fasting. Day three. So tomorrow we meet at, at 10 a.m. No, at 9 a.m. Sorry, at 9 a.m during our scheduled time of family reunion. Now, we are not meeting in person for this entire month, but we are meeting virtually. So for the month of January is your personal time, corporately, virtually, we're gonna connect and we're gonna pray together. So join me live, join me online, not in person, online at 9 a.m. Where we're going to do a deep dive on reimagine leadership. Reimagine leadership. We talked about those three core areas. And I talked prophetically last week about the political crisis that Israel faced and many nations are going to face. Next week, on this Sunday, will be day three, where we're going to talk about reimagine leadership. God bless you. Blessings to you, my brother Cohen. Blessings. Blessings to all of you. Thank you so much for joining. Share this live stream. Share this um, live stream. And more important, share the replay. And for those who are joining us on the replay, blessings to you. Hallelujah. God is good, and His mercy endures forever. My name is Pastor M. Wally. I am from the Key of David International. I want to remind you that we love you. Oh, yes, we do. And more importantly, Jesus loves you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Take care. God bless you.